Years ago I lived in Pennsylvania and back then I enjoyed fishing Broken Straw Creek which was known for having a really high uh, population of crayfish that lived in there. Um, I would stand in the creek in my sneakers and jeans and if you stood in one place for too long the crayfish would eventually start trying to crawl up your pant legs. So trout and bass do love to eat crayfish and I wanted to come up with my own pattern that was realistic and uh, that I could catch a lot of fish with. So you use a size 4 wet fly hook with a standard shank length. I like to match the color of my thread to the color of the fly. Got to use fairly heavy thread. This is a 6 aught. You can go heavier if you want. I'm going to give the shank a good even coating of thread so that it will hold all the materials on there. There's a sequence in which we put our materials on. And we want to start with the antennas, which we make out of pheasant tail. Just take two strands from your pheasant tail. This is golden pheasant. You can use ringneck pheasant tail too. Whatever you have on hand. If you want to be nitpicky, you put one strand on either side of the hook so that they separate. To make the eyeballs, you use a, any kind of a heavy monofilament. Just use a cigarette lighter to melt the end into a little ball. And that's your eyeball on a stock. Make sure that's hardened before you start tying it on. Make sure your wraps are fairly tight because this nylon monofilament is slippery material. You want it's, everything secured on there pretty good. Trim off the ends. Now this is where having a rotary, rotary vise comes in handy. You invert it. So to make the carapace of the fly, for this one I'll be using what's called Swiss straw. You can also use scudback. It's a stretchy latex stuff. But when I use scudback for this pattern I like the color of the latex to match the fly that I'm tying. This stuff is clear so I don't want to use it. I use my Swiss straw. So next, we'll be putting on the yarn that's going to be the color of our body. So that's the color I want to use. This strand of yarn is too thick for our purposes, so I'm going to split it in half, divide the strands up like this. tie on our yarn. I 
And what we want is to make just a little ball of yarn here at the nose of the fly. And that'll help spread out our claws as you'll soon see. So we have our little ball of yarn and I'm going to tie that down. And then get it out of our way. So the claws are going to be made out of red squirrel tail and we're going to tie them on one at a time. So you select a little bunch of fur, not, not too big of a bunch, just kind of wispy like that. And you want to get all the short hairs out, so what you do is you grab it by the tips and then just kind of tease out any short hairs that are in there. Squirrel tail generally the tips are evened up, although not perfectly. You can grab the tips like this and then pull out the shorter ones and even them up that way. So you have a nice tight little bunch here. You want to lay them against the hook and size them like this for the length of the claw that you want. Once you have them sized, you grab them firmly by the tips like this and then tie them in and make sure that all the strands are on only one side of the hook. Sort of use the thread to force it like that. Squirrel hair is very slippery material, so you've got to use quite a bit of thread tension to keep it on there. So then you want to give it a couple of wraps around the base of the clump of hair to gather it all up and make it nice and tidy. Just give it two wraps. There's one. And there's two. Then we do the same on the other side for the other claw. So we have to trim the butt ends off, and here's a little trick. You never want to trim off your ends square. You want to trim them off at an angle. So you pull everything down, hold your scissors parallel to the shank, and give it a snip. That way your cut, it, cut ends are tapered towards the eye. So the next step is we want to weight the underbody of the fly in such a way that it will ride with a hook point going up. And there's a way of doing that. I'm using lead solder wire. It's a .030 inch diameter. And this roll I've been tying off for about 25 years now. So the way you go about it is to first lash it the underside with the slack coming out the hook bend side of it. Okay, tie that in real good. See how that's on the underside of the hook? Hook points up here, the lead's underneath. Okay, so next I want to park the thread and I want to wrap the lead around just the back side of the hook. 
And this is also where having a rotary vise is very, very helpful, but not mandatory. So once you get this far, about half the shank length, you hold it with your thumbnail like this and then bend the lead so it's laying alongside of this lead over here. And it's pretty helpful if you trim it off at this point as well. So as I hold it, then I lash it down with a thread. nice and firm tension on the thread. One little trick, because this lead wire is soft, you can use your thumbnail to kind of smooth out the end so that it's not a square end. You give it a taper and that will make it a lot easier later when we're tying things down. Okay, so now I got it right back upside again. And before, before I wrap the body material around it. I want to tie in the legs. Again we're using this pheasant tail. You grab two strands, bring your thread to about here, and just kind of crisscross lash them down so that they stick out either side like this. Do that with one clump, advance the thread a little bit, and then take another two strands and tie those down the same way, only a little further back. Okay, now we, the tricky part is we have to wrap this yarn through all these legs and around the body so that the lead doesn't show. It will help if you give it a twist and just try to lay your wraps one beside the other. Okay, so now we tie down, we tie down our yarn, and we get the yarn out of the way, and we want a material that's going to give segmentation to the tail of it, so you can use either larva lace, or swan and days, but you want to match the color to your fly as much as you can. Give it a snip so that it's tapered like this. And then the, I'm using swan and days here. Swan and days has a D shaped profile, and you got to make sure that you have the, the round side in when you lash it on. That way. Around the side will be out as you're wrapping it around the body. Okay, next we want to tie in the tail flukes. 
For the tail flukes, I use the breast feathers of a ringneck pheasant. So you only want two feathers. And then you strip away all the barbules up to a point about like that. Kind of good to leave in a little bit of that darker color in there for for appearances. So once we have our two feathers ready to go, you lay one on top of the other. You trim the stems about like that. And I use, I use crimpers because the stems are not flat in the orientation that we need them for when we tie them down. So you got to flatten these stems so that they sit properly when we tie them on. So what you do is flatten them and then kind of force the feather to be flat with the tips of our crimpers. Do that by twisting it firmly right at the base of the feather like that. We do one at a time. Okay. Lay one on top of the other. And then stick the stems through the eye of the hook like that. And then we tie them in. You can kind of preen them so they're laying how you want them. Now it doesn't look it, but at this stage of the game we're getting close to the end. A few magical moves and we'll have it all together. So, first we want to wrap our yarn well, we want to advance the thread to the eye of the hook we're going to wrap our yarn around the tail of the fly coating it evenly like that tie that off Then we take our Swiss straw and we lay that back along the body of the fly and tie that off. So we trim the butt ends of these, making sure we leave plenty of room at the eye of the hook. Right now you can trim the tail flukes as well. You do it with one snip like this. Okay, then we take our swanidase and you spiral, spiral wrap it along the tail. Trim off our swanities. So we're almost done here. We can trim our legs on either side. And what I do is I lay my finger along those leg feathers and use the tip of your scissors to score them so that they're bent like a crayfish's legs.
and then we whip finish. And there we have our little crayfish fly. Eyeballs and claws and legs and tail flukes. There's the underside. One thing about fishing with a crayfish pattern is that a fish, when it eats a crayfish, will murder it because a crayfish is capable of fighting back, you know. So that makes it really exciting when you get a strike. It's a hard hit. Now that Swiss straw is, uh, is rather weak material, just a few strikes from a fish and that falls apart. So what I do is you take some nail polish and coat it real good, clear nail polish, and do the head wraps at the same time, and let it dry.